Okay, so we're recording, and I'll be putting this up later. Um, here's last week's um, video. And um, look at that, 87 views. That's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, so clearly people are watching the videos and doing the quizzes later, so that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to maximize convenience for my students my precious students, so um, that's what it is. I'm going to put these up every week, um, and you can watch it anytime you want. If it's difficult for you to wake up <laughs> on a Friday morning and you miss something, uh, don't worry. You can get it all on YouTube later. Um, hang on. People coming in. Right then. So... Um, got about 60 people in now but that's fine as far as i'm concerned um, if you watch it later it doesn't really matter and uh, if we do go back in the classroom at any point this semester um, i'm still going to do it on zoom yeah gonna keep doing this because i think it's in many ways it's much much better i think than the previous arrangement for a big class a big lecture style class i think it's much much better than previous style and i'm gonna keep doing it in the future to be honest with you okay then so i don't think we have any particular problem um feel free to put your video or your sound on anytime you want to speak out or whatever you want to do it's up to you or you can put your comments in chat um and that's no problem let me just um very briefly go into screen share there's screen share, and here is, oops, hang on, somebody coming in. Okay. Um, I'm not going to show you the scores. It doesn't really matter. I think everybody's pretty good anyway. Um, but I'll just scroll through these just briefly. So you can check that your name and number is there, if it should be. Uh, we've got quite a lot of people in there, about 90 odds. So that's about everybody. Okay. Um, I'm just going to scroll very slowly through these so you can check that your name and number is in there. I think you can see one or two people done it more than one time. That's fine. Do it as many times as you like. Lots of kobashis there. Okay. Maybe one or two people doing it twice. Do it three times. Do it as many times as you want. Doesn't matter. All right. You'll update and you'll get a better score if you improve it. So that's perfectly fine. Okay. Here's the Hikaku people and the others. Okay then. So that's somebody coming in. Hang on. 64 now. Okay, so that should give you a chance to check that your name was there. Um, if it's not and you think you did it, then maybe there's a problem. Let me know. Okay, but I think most people are in. Don't think we have any particular problem. Okay, so that's that. Okay, I'm not going to show you the uh, scores, but I am going to get that. But I am going to, let me just put that in my trash so I don't get confused. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so here's last week's um, stuff. Remember Byron and stuff like that. Um, as I said, 87 views, that's pretty good. Okay, so you're getting more people watching the video than we are actually attending the class. Why not? Right. Um, okay, then, let's have a look. What else am I going to do? I can't remember. Anything else? No, I don't think so. I'm going to go to um, get rid of that. Hang on. I'm going to go, don't want that either. Uh, what do I want? Here, okay. No, I don't. Oh, I messed it up, did I? I haven't got what I wanted. Hang on. Let me just do this again. Um, let's go into so let's get into my mail. Shouldn't take too long. Sorry about that. I can never remember to do it right. 
Um, and here's my, I could check all my mails out. That's not very interesting, is it? And uh, here's the stuff we're going to do. This is today's. Last week's is here. And I'm just going to see that's the Excel file that I just downloaded here. Um, we had 90, 92, yeah, 92 respondents. Uh, average score about 94.6 is pretty good, I think. And no particular problem. Just um, got magic word. Be careful. <laughs> All right. It's 25 points. All right, 25 points for the magic word. I've forgotten what today's magic word is. I'll tell you later. All right. Um, don't get, try, <laughs> try and get the spelling right. All right. And um, I'm trying to tell you this a few times. Um, so, you know, don't get it wrong. Poetry, right? Be careful here. I don't know what that is. Power to leave. I think that's the name of a rugby player or something. Anyway, never mind. Doesn't matter. You can do it again. Right, if you want to, if, you, if you're worried about losing the magic word points, which are 25 points, that's quite a lot, right? Um, so you probably want to get that. You can always do the thing again. It's up to you. All right then. So the um, that's logic and reasoning. Human logic. Yeah, maybe I should change that. Actually, human intellect. Yeah, these are kind of good answers, right? I might change these later. Um. I mentioned reasoning many reason many times and reasoning, so I think I'm entitled to accept to uh, demand that. But I might change these. Actually, these are quite good answers, so I might put those in as possible answers. Then your score will change. Yeah, but I prefer reason. Right? It's usually referred to as reason. But logic is basically the same thing. Intellect certainly. You could argue this is true. Uh, human human mind, I'm not going to accept that because that's grammatically not right. You could say the human mind. But the importance of human mind, you can't say it. Human ration, not really. Uh, rationally, no, is an adverb. Rationality might work, right? Rationality might work, but I'm nobody said that, so I'm not going to worry about it. But anyway, reason is probably, reason or reasoning is probably the best answer. Separating between church and government or state is correct. Don't think the others are going to work because you got spelling mistakes. States is not really right. Symbol is not right. Um, so new scientific thoughts as the physical world as a machine is correct. Not computer because I'm mean, talking about the Enlightenment, right? Which you're talking about in the 18th century. So there's no computers then. So it, you know, I get what you mean, right? Because it's a machine. A computer is a machine. Um, but this is the physical world. Right, not really. The physical world isn't really regarded as a computer. It's really seen seen as as a machine. Right? Then you get this funny split between the mind and the physical world. Yeah. Um, yes. And then over time, science began to see the mind brain as a computer or calculators. Both okay. Yeah. Uh, Lord Byron was a great English romantic poet. Yes, poet. A great English romantic poet. Be careful with that, please. Um, the Romantic Movement, yeah, it was part of the Romantic Movement, but grammatically, Lord Byron was a great English Romantic poet. Yeah, I think is the only really good answer there. Okay, if you're not happy, you can do it again. Lord Byron was part of the Romantic Movement, yes, correct. As I said, do, do everything in small letters, it's probably easier. Romantic Movement valued emotionalism, emotion and individualism over rationalism yes not nationalism rationalism okay um and again that has to be the noun form the rest is um spelling mistakes be careful with those yeah so oops i'm coming in okay yeah if you come in late doesn't matter um welcome everybody um what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. Oh, rationalism, yes. Rationalism, um, you know, it's like enlightenment, everything was using human reason, right? And he said logic, intellect. Yes, it's okay. I mean, like, you know, you're right, I suppose. I might change those. But then you got the um, valued emotion over individualism and 
sort of valued emotion and individualism over rationalism. I so it was kind of movements away from logic and rationalism, yeah. um, more towards emotion. And I think you kind of see that kind of thing today, right? And with Donald Trump, I honestly think it's the same kind of thing. It's like a rebel yell from the Civil War. A yeah, kind of crazy rejection of logic and science. It's weird, isn't it? But it's, I think it's similar, at least similar. Um, so you can see these historical forces at play. And then one of uh, Byron's most famous poems was Don Juan. That's correct. Well done. Okay. Byron was a celebrity who had many affairs. Is correct. Watch the um, grammar really here and spelling. Flirt. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> um, yes, you got the idea, but I'm not going to go there. Flirt or flirts. Yeah, I get what you mean. But I don't think grammatically that works quite right. So a celebrity who had many affairs. It's kind of fun. Uh, Byron got married in 1815 to a very rich woman, is correct? Bitch. <laughs> wild. Yeah, she wasn't really wild, right? And she wasn't really very young either, actually. Um, bitch. <laughs> That's great. I'm not going to give it. I don't think she was really a bitch. I think she might have been. I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but rich is correct. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think that's why he married her, really. Yeah. And uh, Lady Byron, she's the wife. She said that Lord Byron was completely insane or completely mad. Maybe she was a bitch. I don't know, really. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. I love it. Uh, good answer, but I'm not going to give you the points for that. Okay. It's a fantastic answer, but no good. Um, <laughs> sorry Lord Byron said that um, Lady Byron said that Lord Byron was a wild romantic with no ability to reason yeah to think rationally I suppose you'd say there's one word answers um, a roman yeah, like roman is kind of you know means it is romantic isn't it so he, he did have that in a way um, no ability to reason yeah, he couldn't think straight yeah this is really what's about you know why it's related to semantics and uh, English uh, linguistics and so on. Um, so you've got this kind of two sides, right? reason and emotion, romance and so on. Um, and so Lady Byron, she may have been a bitch, but she was definitely rich. And she um, she believed in reason and she thought her husband was a crazy guy. Let me just let people in. Okay. And um, Lord and Lady Byron's daughter, okay, and she was the main topic because kind of relates to the question of semantics, uh, logic, uh, computer science, um, because she was kind of the pioneer of, um, one of the pioneers of computer science, in fact. Um, and she was called Ada, that's right. Good, actually we used the big letter there. You see, the only thing is this correct answer, right? correct answer but they don't give a tick right there's no tick there right it doesn't matter right but if you put um if you use a i don't know why they do that actually but if you use a, a cap a capital unless i specify capital in the answer um it doesn't give the tick but it doesn't it doesn't make any difference you still get the correct answer all these blues are correct answers okay um 95 percent baby ada yeah i mean i know but it's one word right not Lady Byron. Yeah. She wasn't Lady Byron. She was she's um she's a different name. Yeah. Lovelace, actually. Lord Lovelace, Lady Lovelace. Yeah, so she wasn't Lady Byron, she was Lady Lovelace, Ada Lovelace. Yeah, so not that. And also it's one word only, please, right? With all of these written answers. Okay. And Lord Byron soon left home and died in the Greek War of Independence. He was a kind of, um, you know, why did he do that? Why, do you, why did he fight in the Greek War of Independence? It's all kind of mad, romantic behavior. Um, but apparently he was a war hero, and the Greeks loved him for doing that, which is kind of interesting. Um, and died, yes, died, died, he died. Fighted could be fought. Um, you'd have to come and fought in the Greek. Fought would be okay, I guess, but I don't think I'm going to give that. Yeah, 
because it's really the point is he died. But indeed, he did fight, right? So apart from the grammar here, there's no problem. Joined in the Greek War of Independence. Hmm. Not really. Not really lived. Yeah. Um, so Lady Byron, Lady Byron raised baby Ada without her husband's help. Yes. No problem. Um, Ada studied very hard. Yes. It's all gr grammar, really. Be careful with this, please. I mean, it's fair enough. It's a grammar check as well. well nothing wrong with that. Uh, science and mathematics. Yes, math is good. No problem. Math spelling is there. Math or maths in British style. Uh, they're all okay. You see the tick? Yeah, no problem. Got the right answer there. Um, but mathematics is no good. There's an E in there. Okay, some of the most famous scientists and mathemat mathematicians in Europe came to their house to teach Ada. Scientists, correct. Some of the most famous scientists must be scientists. Okay. What's the spelling? Not really science. Mathematicians, the people who work in mathematics. Scientists, the people who work in science. Um, she was often sick, but she studied hard. She wasn't really mad. I don't think she's mad. <laughs> okay, not really. Um, Ada married William King, Earl of Lovelace. Yes, so I've given here um, small letters. Pretty easy. You get a tick, right? The small letters. It doesn't make any difference, actually. Big letters, small letters. You still get the correct answer. But be careful with the spelling, please. No idea. Okay, fair enough. All right. Um, yeah, be careful. Lovelace. Ada was friends with the famous English scientist Michael Faraday, correct? Again, I've put it small letters, you get a tick. Faraday, spelling. Yeah. If you get cap capital, you still get the correct answer, although they don't give you a tick for some reason. Ada was particularly friendly with the inventor Charles Babbage, correct? Baggage, no. Babbage, okay. Close. Wheatstone, no. Well, where do you get that from? I don't know where that comes from. Maybe that's true, but I don't. But that's Babbage is the important character here. Uh, he invented the somebody coming in. Hang on. Okay, I think maybe somebody's losing Wi-Fi there. If you do lose Wi-Fi and can't join, don't worry. You can watch the video later. Um. Yes, Babbage, 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 Babbage. Don't know who Wheatstone is. You may be correct, but I don't know. But Babbage is definitely the most important figure here. Invented the, the difference engine. Watch the spelling. Careless Miss. Um, was kind of early a calculator or computer. Yeah. Spelling. Be careful with the spellings, please. There's lots of misspellings here. Right? It's mostly misspellings. Right? Um, the analytical engine is correct. The difference engine was the first one. A more advanced computer design was the analytical engine. Okay, so difference engine doesn't. Different engine is like that. But no, I'm not going to give it to you. And then you got the spelling, the huge engine. It was kind of huge as a computer. So that's true, but it's the name, right? The analytical engine was the name. Okay, Ada translated spelling, careless miss, Babbage's work. And in addition to the translation, Ada added some original notes. Yes, she wrote her own notes to it, right? Because she was really interested in this stuff. Translator's notes. Yeah, I think that's a, that's not a bad answer, actually. Some translator's notes. Hmm, that is actually true. I might change that. Yeah, I might. I'm not sure original translator's notes. They were translator's notes, so maybe I should give that. Anyway, see how it goes. It's not a big deal. A couple of points. In these notes, Ada describes an algorithm. Yes, yeah, so that's the important thing, right? So she comes out with an algorithm, right? So, so you're telling the computer, do this, or the, you know, the calculator, do this step, this step, this step, this step, and this step, right? So you're telling the computer what to do, right? So the human being, gets the idea and tells the computer in an algorithm 
tells the computer, tells the calculator, whatever you want to call it, tells the analytical engine in an algorithm, do this, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. So that's an algorithm. Um, spelling describes an idea. It is an idea in a way. Yeah, and humans have the idea, but I still don't think that's right. Described and program doesn't work grammatically. It is a kind of program, right? I mean, it's people credit it as the first computer program, but described an right, program is not going to work. I'm not going to accept that. Yeah. Many people claim that this was the first ever computer program. Yes. First, the first ever computer program. Must be program. Programs is no good. Grammar, grammar, grammar. So grammar and spelling is the most thing, is the most, you know, um, obvious problem here. But yeah, it's only a small thing. One or two points here and there doesn't matter really. Um, other symbols, yes. Yes, the machine, and that's kind of interesting as well that uh, Ada was looking at this and saying, hey, can on, you've got not just numbers, machines will be able to handle all kinds of symbols. And we could uh, describe algorithms to do that. Um, manipulate other lang symbol machine. No, it has to be a cat. Must must be a plural. Manipulate other symbol languages. Manipulate other languages as well as numbers. Yeah, but the thing is, numbers isn't really a language, right? So it doesn't really quite work. Other system. No, it has to be plural systems. Not bad, I suppose. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, she and she discussed inter, uh, artificial intelligence. Is correct? Okay, what's the spelling? So you know, even in um, mid nineteenth century, with the very first computer, which we can call computer, I suppose, um, she was already thinking about the idea of artificial intelligence. Right. She's making algorithms, right? a kind of the first computer program, telling the computer what to do. And she said, uh, human thought is completely different from machine calculation. Yes. Machine program, not really. Machine calculator, no. Yeah. And spelling. Um, she said that machine a machine cannot originate anything. Yes, think anything. That's not a bad answer. Um, not sure about that. Think anything. I think I may have given that as a good answer anyway, actually. That yeah, is kind of true, right? So a machine cannot really think, I suppose. Yeah. But anyway, that's the point. Same thing in a way. They can't originate, right? A machine cannot originate anything. And um, if you're thinking about meaning and semantics, that's kind of a very big issue. Because we're thinking, well, you know, what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Can a machine actually think? Right? Can a machine really think? Can a, Can a machine actually originate anything? Or is it just doing what we tell it to do? Yeah. Um, I tend to agree with Ada. I don't know what you think. Right. But I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure. I change my mind from time to time. Anyway, uh, 38, she said that human imagination and intuition are the key. Yes. What's the spelling? Can't say intuition and intuition. That's no good. Um, there's nothing to fear from AI. I don't think she said learn, right? I don't think we'll accept that because um, she did think we could learn from AI, right? She thought it was important, but she said we shouldn't fear it. We shouldn't be afraid of it. Of course, that's the point because, you know, people like Elon Musk and um, a lot of these big names, you know, Hawking, people like that, Stephen Hawking, they're always saying that um, computers are terrifying. Very, we should be afraid of computers. Be afraid of computers. They're going to take over the world. They're going to control human beings and kill us all. Right? 
Um, and she said, you know, she kind of saw this, right? She saw this happening uh, back in the, uh, the mid 19th century. And she said, well, not really early mid 19th century. And um, she said, no, don't worry. It's not a problem. They just do what we tell them to do. All right? It may look like they're scary, may look like they're very clever. Um, and in some ways they are cleverer than us. You know, they're faster than us and so on. But in fact, you know, they're just doing what we tell them. So don't worry about it. As long as you're sensible, there should be nothing to worry about. So anyway, that was Ada, Ada's position. I don't know what you think, right? It's, it's just an opinion. Ada did not believe that human thought was just electrical activity. Yes. Electric activity is not bad, but electrical is better, I think, as the adjective. Electricity is a noun, so no, I'm spelling mistake. Um, Sturm and Drang, yes. Okay, that's a bit difficult. It's a bit like Trump, Sturm and Trump, but it's tr true in a way, right? I think there's a link between Sturm and Drang, the Romanticists, and Donald Trump, but that's not the correct answer. Drang is the correct answer. They don't give a tick because it's a capital notice. Um, but it doesn't matter. For romanticists, it's easy. It's important to see ourselves as heroes. Yes, heroes, heroism. We see ourselves as heroes, not heroism. Um, yeah, interesting. Eh? Um, we want to see ourselves as more intelligent and more powerful than we really are. Okay, got to find what will fit into that, of course. Okay, so you get the idea, right? Um, so that is, oops, that is that. I'm going to close that then so I don't get confused. What else have we got here? Okay, let me just go in here. Uh, there's today's Zoom class. I'm going to take that down later. And then we've got today's quiz, which is there. And I'd better check, actually. Ah, I know I should have done this. I should have done this. Um, let me see again here. There you go. Um, I better check today's magic word, the all-important magic word, which I have completely forgotten. Today's magic word is, ah, yes, here we are, semiotics. Semiotics, S-E-M-I-O-T-I-C-S. There's no particular reason why that's the magic word. It's just a random thing. Yeah, but you're supposed to get that right to prove that you've paid some attention to either the class or the video, right? Semiotics. What is semiotics? I'm going to say that a few times as we go through it. S-E-M. S-E-M-I-O-T-I-C-S. Okay, so it has to be exactly right. I do everything in small letters. It doesn't matter, but you won't get a tick if it's not exactly the same as the as what I put in. Oops, somebody coming in. We now have about 68 people, which is rather good. And I'm going to start. Let me just go out briefly, just check that. Couldn't find my attendance. Ah, now that's a problem, maybe. Okay. Right. Couldn't see your attendance there. I mean, in the, in the Excel file, is it? Is that who's you know sign, is it? Momoka. Speak to me. Hi. Yes. So, well, in the your, your your name and number wasn't in the Excel file. Number. Yeah. Did you? I mean, did the um. You know, I looked at that Excel file before. Need me ah. It wasn't there, was it? Let me just check again for a second. See, well, let me just. I don't want to show everybody the uh, thing. So, let me just have a look. Um, this is it there. Let me just see. Um, let's see there. 
kind of a problem if that happens. Okay, give me a second here. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Right, let me just go back in again. It's kind of important, this, so let me just give me a, give me a second to do this. So it's... So you're not there, you mean, is it? You're not here? One more cut. Who do you not? Huh? No, you're not there. Uh, Did you send it? Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, I must need Q Junini. Q Juni. You're there, you? Hi. Oh, you're there. You're there. Okay. No problem. You're there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. No, so I mean, I'm glad you said that, right? Because it was good to check it. Yeah. So basically, there's no problem. Okay. Well done. I'm not going to look at your score. <laughs> I'll look at it later. All right. Let me just close that then. So anyway, that's, that's good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing that because um, it kind of shows that things are working nicely. So I'm glad about that. Okay. Let me just go back in again. Have a quick look. Um, so it's just, ah, hang on. Uh, okay. Yeah, the attendance thing. I mean, I don't, I think if it's a Shuseki no Peji on web class, yeah, don't worry about that. It's not very important, actually. Yeah. The, um, the Shuseki page on web class isn't very important. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. So what's this? This is, are you going to keep doing this class online or YouTube video during the rest of the semester? Yes, I am. Yeah, uh, that's, the, um, that's the answer to that question. Um, what's that? Kojima-san, is it? Um, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, if I, if I go in the classroom, I may, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if I can, I'm not sure. I think I can. Um, but if I go in the classroom, I will still do it like this. Yeah. So I'll still do it on, you know, it's like, so for example, the students might be in the classroom, but the students may be looking at the screen or maybe looking at their, at their Noto Pasokon, right? And so I'm going to continue to do it online. Yeah. Like this, basically. So I may go in the classroom, but I'll still do it like this. Yeah. Is that, is that Kojima-san? I'm not sure. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, thank you for your kind response. Okay, good. Is that okay? Is that okay with you? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I just huh? I'm not sure about it. So yeah. okay, that's that's all it is. Yeah. What, what mm -hmm. do do you like doing it online? Uh, yes, I really like it. So, okay, good. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. Good. I th I think it works. It works really well for a big class like this. Where mm -hmm. where, are you, where are you living now? Uh, I I mean. What I'm currently so okay, so mm -hmm. it may be, it may be difficult for you to come into Tsuru, right? Yes, yeah, so yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. that's that's fine, yeah, and okay, it's, and it's so, nice nice to speak to you in Wakayama, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I can uh take your class online, right? Yeah, no problem, yeah, and so okay, can, yeah, and if you and you and if you, and if you miss the class, you can still do the, do the YouTube and the quizzes and stuff like that, so no problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Thank, thanks for that comment. So, yeah, maximum, um, maximum, um, what can we say? Maximum convenience for my precious students. That's the uh, that's what I'm going for. And um, yeah, and also I think it I think it really works better. Yeah, you've got a video app. Everybody can watch it later. They can you know, take their time. There's loads of advantages. I mean, there's some some things are better face-to-face -face, but you know there's big advantages i think to zoom classes and um if we go back in the classroom we'll try to maximize those face-to-face -face advantages but i'm going to continue to do the zoom okay then let me just go back in then nice to get some communication with actual students and, and i'm going to go 
into the today's class, basically, which is kind of an easy one today, actually, right? So I'm just going to do it. This is a kind of overview, right? Um, uh, semantics, uh, very general. And don't forget the magic word is semiotics, S-E-M-I-O-T-I-C-S. -E it's a random word, basically. It's connected to the, today's class, but it's basically a random word. And I had forgotten what it was, but that's what it is, semiotics. Okay, then now it uh, should be quite easy today. Uh, maybe it won't only take me 20, 25 minutes, and then you can do the quiz. So anyway, semantics is important in other fields, right? Because it's meaning, right? It's kind of the key issue. Um, and, you know, I think I, I might mention this later in the course, that even if you look at other um, parts of linguistics, right? So if we talked about syntax and grammar, or we focused on syntax and grammar in the first semester, um, you know, but even if you look at syntax, you can never really separate syntax and semantics. So semantics comes into everything, right? And that's why it's difficult in a way, right? Because it's, it's always there, right? And it's, you can't really separate it from anything, right? Because meaning is fundamental um, to reality, essentially, right? Um, and the way we try to understand meaning is very often very simple. Right? We try to simplify it as much as possible. We talked about, you know, people like um, Plato and Aristotle, and they were saying that, you know, there's different forms of ideas, right? different kind of ideas. A person is an animal, a dog is an animal, a cow is an animal, right? That kind of thing. And then you've got sort of... Um, Kazuo owns Fido. Right? Fido is a dog and the dog is an animal. Right? Kazuo owns Fido. There's a relation there. Right? There are different ways of actually categorizing meaning, but we never really understand what it is. Right? We're trying to make sense of it, trying to simplify it, but it's such a mysterious thing. We can never really understand it. But in a way, that's what makes, makes it fun, I think. Anyway, it's important in computer science, right? Computer science will try to model, right? Provide models of um, words, for example, right? Where they have the grammar, right? The features of grammar and the features of meaning, semantics here, right? Um, and also they'll have the idea of, you know, sound, right? So a, a word, right, would have a sound, have a sound up here which again is very difficult to understand by the sound of a word and then the grammar of a word and the meaning of a word right so it's kind of a, a word is a sign a phrase is a sign a sentence is a kind of sign they're all signs right they're all kind of signs and they all have sound grammar meaning that's what a word is okay, it's a sign with sound grammar meaning and of course chomsky is kind of saying oh syntax 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 we kind of lose sight of that idea anyway let's go back and um yes yeah, important to philosophy we mentioned plato and uh, aristotle and people like that rene descartes uh oh, william of Ockham and uh, william james all these people and they're asking very you know important questions like you know i think therefore i am um, what is the meaning of life? What is reality? We don't know. It's very mysterious. So semantics is important to these very, was fundamental to these very big philosophical questions. And it's important in psychology, right? uh, how we actually make sense of things. And it's important in cognitive science, right? Cognitive science, cognitive, which is really to do with the study of knowledge. Yeah. So meaning. So in cognitive science, we're trying to understand things. We're making models of meaning, making models of, of, um, of grammar and so on, making models of sound, for example. But um, semantics, meaning, tends to be the one which causes the biggest problems because it's so mysterious. Anyway. Um, yeah, and it's important in artificial intelligence. 
Oh, these funny robots. This, I believe, is Pepper. Pepper is a bit scary, right? Um, I think. <laughs> I don't know what you think. I think he's scary, right? But um, a bit creepy. But um, Ada Lovelace said, yeah, don't worry. They're just, you know, they're just doing what we tell them, right? They're not able to really think. They're just kind of following, following an algorithm, right? Basically it's doing exactly what we tell them, right? So don't, it's up to you, whatever you think. Do you believe that? I don't know. No idea, really. Change my mind every day. Today, I tend to think, yeah, they're just, they're just following our orders. Maybe I'll change my mind tomorrow. Anyway, think about it. Oops, somebody coming in. Okay, somebody coming in. I think we had, uh, I think we lost Wi-Fi there for a second. If you lose Wi-Fi, you have to come back in. Don't worry, you can watch the video later. Okay, then. And, um, oops, lost my thing. Okay, here we go. Um, semiotics. Semiotics is the, oops, I don't want to lose that. Semiotics is the magic word. That's it. That's Do a small s, right? Semiotics is probably better. Doesn't matter though. Um, and semiotics is the study of signs. Yeah. There's the magic word, semiotics, and it is the study of signs, right? Um, a word is a, is a kind of sign. Yeah. Um, but there are, of course, many different signs. Right. Um, signs, what is it? Like that, that's a sign, I suppose, right? Um, there's signs all over the place. And semiotics is the study of signs. And so semantics is important to the study of signs. I think somebody's in chat. Hang on, can I just go out for a second? Um, good morning, so I'm you into a number seven, it was a mistake, is it? Okay. Is semantics is important in ah yes 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 that's right i'll change that okay that's good thanks very much matthew good so it should be our oh, computer science though what is semantics is important in that's okay isn't it computer ah yeah i know yeah okay could be cognitive science could be but because it's R on the end, it has to be computer. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm not going to change that. Yeah, it's com the number seven. The answer is computer science. Yeah, I mean, it's true that it is also important in cognitive science, but I'm giving the hint, so you have to follow the hint. Yeah. Got it. Okay, good. Yes, thank you very much. But that's a good point. I'm glad to get um, glad to get some input from my students. I mean, it's a bit funny doing. It. So that's the one thing about Zoom, which is a bit strange. You kind of get no kind of reaction. So it's good to get some um, some comments from people. So please feel free to speak out or make a comment in chat. Okay. Anyway, semiotics is the magic word, and it's the study of signs. Yeah, and a word is a sign. Oops. So look, here we go. Right. Um, but semantics, as I say, is mainly about words, right? Yeah, because it's language. Uh, so, you know, historically, particularly semantics has really focused on words. Um, and so let's think about semantics in linguistics, right? So I suppose this is kind of a little model. Oops, where are we? This is a little model of um, what, you know, linguistics does. Uh, probably the most simple, just study of speech sounds. You've got phonetics, and then sort of more scientific study of sounds would be phonology. Morphology would be the internal structure of words. Right, that's going to be in the quiz. Right, for morphology, it's kind of a review of the first semester, actually. Right, so the, uh, the internal structure of words. God, what's happening? Okay, here we go. Um, morphology is the internal structure of words. Syntax is going to be the structure of, you know, sentences, essentially. Yeah. Um, the structure of language. And semantics is meaning. And then pragmatics is also semantics. Yeah. And it's the study of meaning in context. 
uh, looks down here, you see meaning in context of discourse of what you're saying, right? So meaning in context, 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 that's also going to be in the quiz, I think. Okay, word is going to be a, made up of sound, grammar, and meaning, right? This kind of goes against Chomsky, right? Chomsky focuses so much on grammar or on syntax, but really if you look at a word, it's clear, clear that a word is, relates sound to meaning, right? If you say, um, I don't know, expeditious, you say, what does that mean, right? That's the main focus, the sound and the meaning. So a word is a sign, right? It's a kind of sign. It's a, it's a sound meaning pair, right? It relates sound to meaning. Grammar helps us, right? Grammar helps us to relate sound to meaning. That's pretty much what it is, okay? And the meaning part is semantics. Okay, that's easy, right? Um, so phonology is study of speech sounds, essentially. A kind of scientific study of speech sounds, whereas phonetics is a bit more boring. Um, positions of tongue and teeth and so on. How open your mouth is, that kind of thing. The roundness or not roundness of your mouth, for example. And morphology is really to do with the internal structure of words. We touched on this in the first semester. You say, for example, you have the stem of a word like product, product, and then you'd have a suffix might make it productive, yeah, or maybe productively, yeah, and then you can add a derivational prefix, a prefix before, to the adjective, right? So you can say unproductive or unproductively. But you can't say an product. It doesn't work because an only attaches to adjectives. Okay? Anyway, that's morphology. Not going to go into that too much. Uh, but all of these things must carry meaning, I think. If you think like, you know, if you say product is the base, right? And product has a meaning. Nobody's gonna agree, nobody's gonna disagree with that. But then you say productive, right? That becomes an adjective. So the if must have meaning, it seems, right? if right when it adds there it seems to contribute it's not just making it an adjective it seems to be some kind of meaning there right and then productive lee leave does lee have meaning right and then un well un see must have meaning right it's saying it's not productive right so it seems to contribute meaning right so um it seems that you know at least some of these things Right? At least some of these things must have meaning. Right? And that's kind of, you know, you think, ah, what's the meaning? What is it? What is that meaning? So even these little bits, right? these little bits of words seem to have meaning. But do, because the question then could be, you know, do all linguistic items carry meaning? Yeah. Does everything carry meaning? For example, right? Book. Right? Well, you say book. Right? Does the word book have a meaning? And I think everybody's going to agree, yes, right? Yeah, definitely, right? The word book has a meaning, yeah? I mean, if you don't agree, tell me. I'd be interested to hear. But I think everybody's going to agree. I mean, come on, book, yeah, book means something, right? If you say book, it kind of means something. It's like these things behind me, right? They're books, right? I mean, that has a meaning, right? Um, everyone will agree with that, I think. Right. If you don't agree, I mean, that's, that'd be interesting. Um, what about, for example, that? Right? That, right? Seems to have a meaning, right? Um, does the word that have a meaning? Seems to, right? Um, and, kind of, and it's something that you, you need a context. Right? If you think about the word book, for example, it seems even if there's no context, it still has a meaning. Right? Whereas the word that, right, you kind of need a situation before you know what it is, right? Kind of relates to meaning in context, which is kind of pragmatics, right? So does the word that have a meaning? That, that, right? 
Um, yeah, but I think it does probably seems like right. We need some kind of context. We can say that book or that. You know, I'm, I I like that. Right. It depends on the situation, but it still seems to have a meaning. I think everyone would agree with that, right? So probably that. Yeah. Okay. That has meaning. Uh, then you go, what about something like pen, right? In Japanese, same kind of thing. Does the word pen have a meaning? Yeah, I think we'd probably agree. Yes, everyone would probably agree. Yeah. Um, what about, you know, kono? Yes. Well, you, again, you know, it depends a bit on context, but yeah, we're going to say yes, it, it has a meaning. Probably everyone would agree. And then you got some things like, what about what, right? And then you're thinking, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, or I expect you're saying, uh, what? You know, does that have a meaning? Because what kind of is a marker, right? It's a grammatical marker. It marks things as objects. It says that is an object. Hong wo, right? But it just sort of means the, the, the or doesn't mean anything in the sense, it just marks the, is the hong as, a, as an object, right? Um, but it doesn't, does it have a meaning? Right? Anything, hang on, is there a meaning there? Not sure, right? Got to think about it. So does the word war have a meaning? Um, difficult to say. Yeah? So think about it, right? Some things definitely have meaning. Some things have meaning in context. Right? You need a context to say what that book is. Right? Um or, you know, I like that, it kind of depends on the context. What's that, right? Depends, right? But then something like what, um, they, like, do they have meaning? I don't know. It's not, not really clear, is it? It doesn't seem to be obvious that it has any meaning at all, right? It's just a grammatical marker. It's just a syntactic thing. Yeah, it just marks grammar. Ga, wo, right? Don't seem to have any meaning at all. It's not so easy, right? Anyway, syntax is about words combining to form bigger phrases. So the car, making a noun phrase, that's syntax. Pushed the car, making a verb phrase, that's syntax. Um, Tom's is a, is a noun phrase, subject noun phrase, with a verb phrase makes a sentence, that's syntax. Right? But all these bits and pieces all carry meaning. And the sentence itself also carries meaning. Everything carries meaning. The car has a meaning. Push has a meaning. Tom pushed the car has a meaning. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. All these words must carry meaning. But the actual meaning of the sentence is not static, right? In other words, the meaning of the sentence changes. It's dynamic, depending on the situation. And this, if you say Tom pushed the car, and you say Tom pushed the car, well, who's Tom? Right? Who who is Tom? Right? And what what's what car? Which car? And then you say, well, there, there's no Tom, there's no car, it's just, it's, it's, there's no context. Well, okay, that's fair enough, but that's not how we use language. Right? We usually have a context. There's usually a situation. I mean, if there's no if there's no context and there's no situation, we don't even bother communicating. Right? Why bother? Who cares, right? Why say things if there's no context, there's no situation? So we always have a context, right? We're trying to sort of communicate. We're trying to sort of cooperate together to make sense of things. So, you know, we always have a context. We always have kind of some kind of situation. So the meaning, anyway, in context situations, the meaning is always changing. For example, who is Tom? Which car is it? Right? It kind of depends, right? Depends on the situation. The push idea kind of depends. You know, the form of push depends on the situation. Depends on the situation, depends on context. Context, context, context. Yeah. And pragmatics, right? Pragmatics is the study of meaning in situations, it's the study of meaning in context. Context, context, context. So pragmatics is the study of meaning in context or in actual situations. For example, right? do you like cats? Right? Uh, that's a straightforward question. Right? 
maybe doesn't really need much of a situation, although you're going to say it in a situation. Um, and then you say, what's the answer to that? And you might say yes, right? Which means, yes, I like cats. Or you might say no, yeah? Or you might say something like, I don't like any animals, right? I don't like any animals, right? Well, I don't like any animals. It's like, if you say, do you like cats? And then the answer is, I don't like any animals. Well, it's like, that's not straightforwardly an answer to the question. That's not a yes or a no. You have to think, I don't like any animals. Okay, well, a, a cat is an animal. So that means, right? Cat is an animal. So that means you don't like cats. Right? So there's an extra step in there, kind of logical step. So that's the uh, pragmatics. That's how pragmatics works. And that's how we use language. We're always kind of thinking, oh, that means this, that, I, that person means this, right? Trying to figure it out. That's pragmatics. Um, does that mean yes or no? Well, it, it means no, but why, right? Why does it mean no? Because a cat is an animal, right? And therefore, you don't like cats. So do you like cats? I don't like any animals. Well, cats are animals. So why doesn't like cats? There's an extra step in there. Right? The kind of logical step. And we do that a lot when we're speaking and when we're using language. Okay, then. So, and that is very often referred to as the cooperative principle. Uh, we are very cooperative animals. Yeah. We're always cooperating to help each other to understand things. And we're also very competitive, but we often cooperate when we compete. Right? So, we cooperate with our team to compete, to beat the other team, for example. So still, even if you say we're very competitive, we're still cooperative as well. And we're cooperative, and some people say that we're, we're cooperative in ways that other animals are not, right? And that's what makes human beings different from animals, is that we kind of very, very good at cooperating. And that's why, how we became the, um, the most powerful animals on Earth. By cooperating, cooperate, com, you know, cooperating to compete. Um, so humans usually say things when required. So if, if you if you need to say something, then you say it. If you don't need to say something, you don't say it. Right? Uh, humans usually say things in line with the purpose of the conversation. Right? If you don't just say something completely mad, you say something appropriate. Right? And we know that, and that's how we make sense of what people are saying. Um, now, that's pragmatics, right? Now, the semantics, right? Semantics usually, right, historically, since uh, semantics was focused on the meaning of meaning change, right? Um, so, as I say, you know, philosophical questions like what is meaning? Very, very dif difficult, right? Uh, what is the meaning of life? Very difficult questions, deep philosophical questions. But semantics, the study of semantics was originally about the way that meaning changes, right? historical semantics, I suppose you could say. And then there's a, quite a few words that have changed their meaning over time. Okay, but this was the original meaning of semantics, like s meaning change give you some examples. Um, so word meanings change all the time. You've got this with William Shakespeare here. Old fashions please me best. I am not so nice to change true rules for odd conventions. Nice. And if you look at nice there, and think about how we use nice, and you look at that sentence and you think, uh, what? What's that? Why is he saying nice there? I'm not so nice. What do you mean not so nice? doesn't really quite make sense and there's a reason for that because the the word nice originally meant clumsy or stupid right so nice originally meant stupid yeah and then actually changed a little bit to mean very you know kind of precise right the so changes from stupid to precise right and kind of shakespeare's meaning here is precise and then it changes to how we use it now to mean something like this this good Right, and by Shakespeare's time, it meant very precise or careful. Right, so I'm not so careful 
to change true rules for odd inventions. That makes a bit more sense, right? So words are changing, right? And um, semantics, somebody's coming in. Okay. And semantics was really focused on um, meaning changes, how meanings change. Historical, historical semantics was the original focus of semantics. Um, and now we mean it more generally about meaning. Okay, so that's that. For example, uh, the gay 90s, the gay, gay, right? Gay originally, and still to a certain extent, right? Um, meant full of joy, right? From the, from the late 14th century, sort of happy. Yeah, gay, oh, I feel so gay, right? I'm happy, right? full of joy. Um, so that was the original meaning of gay. Um, and it still has that meaning, but it's not really used so much. Right? It's changed um, to, to mean what it means today. And in my lifetime, that, has, that meaning has changed. Yeah? And it's, we've almost lost the um, 14th century gay meaning of happy or joyful. Yeah? So words change all the time. Got words like wicked, again, a word which has changed a lot in recent times. Wicked, right? Wicked. Wicked originally, right, um, meant very bad. It came from the word wicca, right, which is to do with witches and wizards, kind of magic, right? Wicca. Wicca actually is the fastest growing religion in the world, believe it or not. Yeah. But it was originally meant referring to witches and wizards and being very bad. And it still has that meaning. Right? We still use it to mean very bad, a wicked person. He is a wicked person. Right? You could say that. Um, so it gets that meaning of very bad from its original connection with witches and wizards, Wicca. W-I-C-C-A, right? You might want to check that out on Wikipedia, Wikipedia, right? Um, Wicca, W-I-C-C-A, the fastest growing religion in the world. Magic. Um, but it originally meant very bad because it kind of connected to witches and wizards. Um, and then over time, particularly in modern times, it's taken completely the opposite meaning right? very often good and bad words mean words meaning good and bad completely change their meaning take the opposite meaning so for example in ron in harry potter i'm hoping people in the, this class have actually watched harry potter i'm not even sure these days uh, but when ron says wicked right in harry potter which is about magic right when he says wicked he means very good or if something is wicked, it's very good. So you get this strange 180 degrees reversal of meaning. And these things happen very, very quickly, it seems. Um, Michael Jackson says, I'm ba bad, right? Meaning kind of good. Bad means good, wicked means good, and so on. You reverse the meaning. And then you got uh, so historical semantics. Um, that was the original meaning right, of semantics, um, where you get certain words like awesome have changed their meaning. Awful right, changes its meaning. Nice changes its meaning. Thing has changed its meaning. I've forgotten what it, mean. it meant originally. Thing. Thing originally meant a meeting, I think. Let's have a look. Thing originally, yes. Thing originally meant a meeting. Yeah. That's a thing. Uh, and then they take on a broader meaning to be basically anything. Right? Um, and here's an important book, The Meaning of Meaning. And kind of focuses in these kind of ideas uh, where you get kind of three-way triangle, right? It's three things. Very often there's three things in language and stuff like that. Three, threes, right? Groups of three. Can't do it. What is it? Like that, right? Groups of three. Um, very often help us understand meaning 
and words and signs and symbols, right? Um, so, for example, with a word, right, you actually got the actual word, right? Then you got the idea of the word, and you've got the thing it, that it refers to, right? We'll go over this a lot, right, this semester, so don't worry about it too much. But say, for example, if you have a word like, um, I don't know, phone, for example, right? You've got phone. If I say phone, um, then you've got the word phone. You've got the idea of phone. And you've got the actual thing phone. So the word phone is on paper or it's going through the air. The idea of phone is, I guess, in your head, and the actual phone may be here, in my hand, perhaps. You get the idea, right? So the words, I give an example, dog, the word dog, the idea of dog, and the actual thing. Right, so you get this funny three-way triangle, right? Um, we'll talk about this, you know, a lot this semester. Take any word, you've got the actual word, maybe on paper, maybe in the air, maybe going through the tubes of, YouTube, of um, Zoom, the word going into your ear, right? that actual word. You've got the idea of the word, so I'm making the sound. And then you get the idea, right? You get the idea of the word. Let me think of a word, um, I don't know, microwave. Microwave, right? So you got the word microwave. Then you got the idea of microwave, which is now in your head. And then there's an actual microwave in my office which gave me the idea in the first place. Okay, so threes, there's a weird three thing going on here. Right then, so the actual thing, the word chair, the idea of chair, the actual chair. Let's do that again. Get the word chair, the idea of a chair, and the actual chair. The word chair, the idea of a chair, the actual chair. Okay, and we'll do, we'll we'll go over that again lots of times. Um, and then communicative language teaching, uh, you know about that. Trying to focus on language learning as a struggle with meaning. Right, uh, there is no point in just learning lots of lists of words. Uh, no point in listening to you just teach a talking Japanese about grammar. Uh, because ultimately, when you're learning a language, you have to struggle with meaning, get meaning in or get meaning out, right? So applied linguistic second language acquisition, they say, for example, that communication, meaning in, meaning out, meaning in, meaning out, meaning in, meaning out, communication is the key to second language acquisition. So communication is a transmission of meaning, meaning in, meaning out, meaning in, meaning out, yeah? Um, so meaning is fundamental to language learning. I think that's true, right? You can't just focus on grammar, right? Because meaning, making sure you get meaning in, meaning out, tasks, so the student has to get the meaning in, maybe get some meaning out, that's fundamental. And we've kind of lost sight of this, I think. I think it's really important to get back to this idea. That meaning is the, the whole thing is about meaning. Information, right? Information. The information age, right? It's really about transferring, getting meaning in, meaning out. Information and meaning pretty much the same, have the same meaning. So meaning in, meaning out. Fundamental. Reading is meaning in. Writing is meaning out. Listening is meaning in. Speaking is meaning out. So there's the four skills, yeah? The four skills um, reduce to meaning, either in or out, in different ways. 
Okay then. Um, so the four skills come down to two things, basically meaning in, meaning out. That's all there is to it. Okay then. Running out of time a bit. Better move on. Uh, so language learning is a struggle with meaning. Uh, you're learning English, you're memorizing vocabulary lists, explaining grammar in Japanese. Is that a good idea? Maybe, but you've got to, don't forget, right? Don't forget that you've got to give students a chance, right? To kind of make sense of things, to get the meaning, to process stuff, right? I think that's something we very often we lose sight of. The struggle with meaning. It's important. Let us celebrate the struggle. Okay, then. And, um, you know, when, you sort of, when you're learning a language, your mind is going to change in some kind of important ways. Anyway, so what do you think? Is memorization a waste of time in language learning? Are explanations about grammar a waste of time? I'd say they're not a waste of time, but you've got to make sure that the student is focused on meaning, understanding, processing information. Or is language learning purely a struggle with meaning? Yeah. I think you'll get a balance, right? You're going to say it's all about comprehension, right? It's not all about communication. Maybe memorization is useful. Maybe grammatical explanations are useful. But you've got to get a balance between that and between those things, I think. Okay. So how about reading or repeating conversations, for example? That might be a thing. Is it a struggle with meaning? Do you have to struggle to get your meaning out, for example? And I'm going to actually stop there, I think, because I'm going to run out of time. I'll, go, I'll do this next time. Um, I think there may be a couple of questions on this in the quiz, but, you know, give it a try. It doesn't matter. You can always change it later. I think I'm running out of time, so I'm going to actually stop there. So let's have a look. We're okay, I think. So, okay, yes, 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 okay, good. Right then. So let me just close that for a second. And I'm just going to, let me open this again. And just going to go to, here we are. So that's that. Today's magic word is semiotics. Let me just check the end of this. Ah, this is just a really easy um, review, so I wouldn't worry too much. There's a couple of things. Ah, yes. Okay, this is good, though, right? Um, now, this, I didn't have a chance to do this today, right? Um, but I think there's something you can work out for yourself, right? So I'm not going to give you the answer to this. Give it a try, right? So there's some things here. Yeah, some things here which I didn't go through. But it might be fun to try it first. Yeah, I've got up to about here. Um, in communicative language teaching. Many people think language is a tool for communication, right? And I didn't do these, right? So there's about quite a few questions here which I didn't cover, right? But um, do your best, all right? Do your best. Try it. It'll be a sort of a preliminary quiz. And um, if you're not happy with your score, I'll give you the answers next week and you can do it again if you want no problem but i think it'll be a good preparation for the things i'm going to talk about next week okay then guys i'm going to stop there i think yeah um rather than rush through that i'll give you a chance to do these um at home and then we'll go through it again next time all right okay then guys so i think that's that so i'll say bye bye you can go, unless you have any questions or anything. So if you want to go, you can go. And I'll give you a chance to do. Yes, lots of people leaving. Give you a chance to do the, uh, the quizzes, the quiz. We're down to about 12 people. Anybody, any questions? Questions or comments? Not particularly? Not particularly, I think. think. Okay, then. Um, oh, yes. Okay. Hi. 
Hi. Yeah, so I'm just uh, questioning the quiz. Yeah. It's number 28. Ah, yes. I kind of don't get it. I didn't eat the apple. I ate one of the and then ah. apples. Is it other? Or... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, okay. Yeah. So it should should be okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna help you with that too much though, right? Oh, okay, so yeah. Because I think it's maybe a good idea to let you think about that for yourselves first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you if you're not happy with if you get it wrong and you're not happy, you can always do it again later. So it should be a problem. Yeah. All right. But I think, you, I think I think I think I think you got the idea. No problem. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay then. Great. So any any other questions? Got Eleven people, and I think maybe that's it. Okay then, guys. I'm gonna close it down. I'm going to put this up on, on uh, YouTube and put the um, link up. So see you next week. Bye-bye.